a nation of raiders. It's a nation of raiders. We a nation of raiders. It's a nation of raiders. We a nation of raiders. It's a nation of raiders. We a nation of raiders. It's a nation of rain. Welcome to a new day. Step up in the oracle. Silver and black, you know, we're so historic. Many backbreakers, many chain treasures. The other teams only wish they could measure. Success is the business. You be my witness. Come feel the wrath of an Oakland menace. From state to state. And any given study, it's the Raider attack. Strap them up and let's play. It's a black attack laced with silver. And we deliver. Guaranteed to make it show the past quiver. Look in the mirror. Search your soul in the black hole. Fourth and goal, you couldn't cross the goal if you're paid toll. Knuckle up. Get on the line, we going 99. YTS. YES. Take this form to your chest. Cause you're with the. Hello, and welcome to another episode of The Inbound with the Oakland Raiders. I'm Melinda Torgerson, and here today with David Tolfson. Hi, David. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Thanks for coming out here on this windy day with us. Yeah, we just missed the rain for practice, so uh, it was a nice day, actually, until it started raining. Good timing. Um, so you're a local boy. You went to school in Concord and uh, Ignacio Valley High School, from what I understand. Mm -hmm. It's a good school. So what sports did you play in high school? Well, uh, obviously I played football, uh, you know, that was kind of my first love, but um, I was also involved in track and uh, volleyball, which was probably my second favorite sport, which uh, when I went to college was kind of crazy to a lot of people from the Midwest that I played men's volleyball because it's not a varsity sport in the Midwest. So, uh, you know, I really loved it. I played against a former Raider, Sam Williams. He went to Clayton Valley High School. We were both two of the better volleyball players in the area. Really? And, and, uh, wow. You know, we kind of grew up knowing each other and then to play against each other in football and then volleyball also, you know, brought us even closer, so. Well, that's nice. It's a good story. Yeah. So while you were in high school, how did you manage to maintain um, your schoolwork and still keep, you know, sports as a priority? Uh, just, you know, due diligence, making sure that you uh, did the work that was uh, given to you, you know, as far as homework and, and doing reports and whatnot, and just making sure I got them done because it's so easy to, to kind of put it on the back burner and say you'll get it done and then practice comes along and then a game and uh, then you you know you're playing catch up the rest of the time and, and just making sure uh, I gave that focus to not just the sports that I played but to, to also the academic side. Excellent that's great and so how did you come about choosing your state college? What was the process there? Well, uh, the process was a pretty lengthy one. You know, I went to Ignacio Valley High School, then Los Padanos Junior College in Pittsburgh, and uh, no one picked me up per se, uh, you know, and, and so I was working at Home Depot, and then my cousin got me a job on his construction crew, and I did that for a little bit. And uh, one of my good friends who lives in San Francisco, Damian Chumley, uh, went to Northwest Missouri State. He was a year younger than me from, from Los Padanos. And he had called me one day and said, Dave, I think you can play here. And, uh, you know, it, it sounded a little bit better than doing construction, which I didn't mind doing. I loved the hard work. You know, a little hard work never bothered me much. And, and I, I liked the job. But I figured if I could go to college and get an education and, and, one, really continue to play football, which I loved, it, it was a, a great opportunity. So uh, I had to take a couple classes to get current with the, with the school system and stuff. And I did that and went and walked on at Northwest Missouri State. Wow, that, that's a good story. Yeah, that is a the, really good story. The cliff notes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I did read about it, so you, you did it very well. Um, so what was your major when you were in school? Well, uh, it's corporate recreation, which is, uh, it isn't really what you think it is. It's not like a company would hire me to keep their employees in shape. You know, it's more of managerial skills and uh, learning how to uh, run like a YMCA per se or something like that or maybe a high school uh, uh, athletic program or something like that which obviously um, I would love to coach uh, you know when I'm done playing I think I uh, I got the mind to do that and stuff like that so it kind of fell into line with what I was hoping to do maybe when I was done playing. That's very nice that sounds very well thought out and prepared. So um, 2006 you got a phone call from the Packers that you were getting drafted. Do you remember what you were doing at that moment and how that felt? Yeah, I was in a bass fishing tournament in the California Delta with my friend Tosh Lupoy, who's actually the de defensive line coach at Washington now. 
in the University of Washington. And uh, I remember we were pulling up to the dock to weigh in our fish for the day, and, and uh, Ted Thompson called me, and, and he said, we're going to draft you with the, the 253rd pick in the draft. Wow. And, uh, and it was exciting because, you know, I put a lot of work into it, and, and I had – no delusions of grandeur. I didn't even watch the draft on the first day, and I didn't watch it on the second day. I was fishing, and I figured uh, I was really just excited to have the opportunity to, uh, to potentially even play in the NFL at whatever that meant as far as, you know, I'd walked on to a Division two school, so if they would let me walk on to the NFL, I'd be more than happy. So uh, it was exciting, you know. I remember getting the phone call from the, the news people and them talking to me, and it was just kind of surreal and, and, and talking to my girlfriend at the time, who's now my wife, and just kind of like, wow, this is, you know, it's kind of like a, a Disneyland moment. Your dreams can, your wildest dreams can come true, you know, and it was pretty neat. Very good. So um, can you tell us a little bit about the other teams that you've played for since then? Well, I was on Green Bay's practice squad my rookie year and uh, got put on IR, I think, week 10 because of my lower back, I'd injured my lower back, lifting weights and getting prepared to play if the opportunity arose. And uh, they didn't re-sign me and the Raiders actually signed me uh, that, I think it was that winter, that spring, and sent me to NFL Europe. And I played for the Berlin Thunder uh, for a season there, came back, uh, got married to my beautiful wife, uh, and uh, then was off to Oakland. We drove to Oakland from our honeymoon and uh, made the practice squad here in Oakland in 2007. And then the Giants picked me up off the practice squad and, and we won the Super Bowl that year. And then I played there for five years, won another Super Bowl last year and uh, became a free agent and decided uh, to come back home. And so now you're back home with two Super Bowl rings and a whole lot more um, knowledge. What does that feel like to be back here and have all that experience behind you. You know, it's definitely a lot different than when I was here before. Uh, you can ask guys like Cooper Carlisle, who uh, I used to give him hell on practice squad when he was playing O-line and I was on D-line. And he's like, you're a little different now, huh, Dave? You got a couple years under your belt. You're not so wild running around like a guy with his hair on fire. Uh, but, you know, it, all the experiences, you, you know, you can't discount them. They all count for something. And, and you just kind of take it all in and, and uh, kind of enjoy the moment, you know, and, and uh, it means a lot to be back. Uh, obviously, my high school coach is back now. He's at Clayton Valley High School, which hurts my heart to say, but he is. And uh, my old junior college coach, he's at Diablo Valley College now, so I get to see them. And, uh, you know, it means a lot to be around because I've been gone for so long. I was gone about 10 years, kind of trying to find my way and figure out what I was doing and to come back home and, and uh, really enjoy to get to be around some of the people that that helped forge me into the man that I am you know it means a lot That's, that is really nice so um can you tell us what your job is out on the field what do you do out there uh, well to keep it simple I got to stop the run and get after the quarterback but you know it really entails a lot of things it's pretty complicated and uh you know you you, you got to take on double teams you got to take on running backs chipping you sometimes you got to cover somebody sometimes you got to get in a certain gap to, if we're running a blitz and whatnot. So uh, it's not as simple as it looks on TV. You know, sometimes, it, you know, you think these big old D linemen, they're just guys you stick in there and they go do whatever they want. And uh, it's pretty, you know, quite a bit more complicated than that. And so can you take us through what a typical day is like for you do, during training or during season? What a day is like when you wake up and you eat breakfast and what do you do? Well, I get up at six. You know, I live uh, in the East Bay in the Valley and uh, get, get my cup of coffee and, and uh, hit the road in the morning, usually listen to some talk radio on the way in. And then uh, then I get here and have my breakfast. They prepare breakfast for us. And then we have special teams meetings, which uh, I also play a lot of special teams here. And uh, then we're off to defense and individual meetings. And then we have practice, which is about two and a half hours. and. Then we have another break to eat lunch and get any treatment that we need on any injuries that we have. And then it's off to meetings again. And, and we're usually here till about four o'clock. It's, you know, it's a full day. Uh, most of the time you spend in a meeting room, you know, the actual practice time is limited on the field and it's a lot of mental work. So, uh, you know, you, you gotta make sure when you're on the field, you get that physical work done and then you watch it and you, you correct the things you gotta correct. I don't think people realize how much mental work you guys really put into mm -hmm. it to prepare ahead of time. Mm -hmm. So um, 
what what's your favorite exercise when you guys are out here? Do you have something that you enjoy more than others or something that you feel kind of really gets you in good shape quickly? Well, you know, uh, I don't mind running. I'm a bigger body guy. I'm 260, 265 pounds. So running gets me pretty tired. And I always like to tell people if I have to run more than 20 yards, usually something bad happened because D linemen aren't supposed to run that far. But uh, I love to squat. I love anything related to the weight room. Uh, it's always been a big passion of mine. I love the off season to get in there and get better and really kind of uh, mold myself into what I need to be to help my team. And uh, it's always an exciting time when you're in the weight room and getting better, you know? Yeah. And do you have any advice when you're injured or you're hurting or uncomfortable after, you know, working out? Do you have any advice for people on how to kind of comfort yourself so you can get up and do it again the next day? Uh, well, you got to stretch and you got to make sure you eat right. Eating is a big part of it because uh, if you're putting things in your body that aren't helping you recover, um, then you're just going to be sore longer. So you got to eat a lot of protein, help your muscles uh, rehab themselves because as you know, whenever you're lifting weights, you're tearing down muscle fibers and they need the protein to rebuild themselves. Drink a lot of water to kind of flush your system. And also uh, something that we have here that you can't really do at home, you can if you try is take a ice cold bath with ice in it and Ooh, stuff like that, that which is, painful. yeah, it's really yeah. cold, but it, it really gets that lactic acid out of your muscles that causes that soreness. And if you can do that, you'll feel a lot better and be ready to go the next day. Really? Okay. Well, can you share with us something, maybe a, a really inspirational moment that, that was important to you in your life that maybe got you where you are today? Well, uh, you know, I, I grew up with a single parent. My father wasn't there uh, when I was born and when I was growing up. And uh, one moment to me, you know, it's, and, it, and it's kind of recent, really. I have two boys now, but I remember going out on the field uh, this last Super Bowl this last year and seeing my sons in the stands. And it was kind of a, a, a big moment for me as a man to know that, you know, I've kind of overcome the odds of not just football player, but as a father, as a man in this generation where you see a lot of fatherless men and that it's a generational curse for that family that it just keeps continuing where you're, you're creating these, these boys that become men that don't know how to be fathers. And it was really kind of neat for me to uh, realize that, that that goal I set for myself to not be like that had kind of come to fruition. And uh, I'm going to be a great father and husband and, and hopefully pass that on to my children. That is a really great story. Wow, thank you for sharing that. Is there anything else that you wanted to say before you wrap it up here? Anything I missed or something you want to talk about? You know, just uh, work hard. Work hard and good things will happen to you. Uh, it sounds kind of simple, but really it's kind of the American dream. You right. know, if, if, yeah. if you put your nose to the grindstone and, and, and don't look back and keep moving forward, uh, your dreams really can come true. And, and uh, I'm a prime example of that. Yeah, you sure are. Well, thank you. This is Dave Tollefson, and I'm Melinda Torgerson, and this has been another episode of The Inbound with the Oakland Raiders. Thank you.